What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at two related rates questions from hell. Your teacher or professor would have to be pretty mad at the class to put questions like this on your test or quiz. So first up here, we have the minute hand of a clock is 8 centimeters long, and the hour hand is 5 centimeters long. How fast in centimeters per minute is the distance between the tips of the hands changing at 3 o'clock? So now to solve this question, the first thing I would do is draw this out. So we have a clock, and we're told that the minute hand is 8 centimeters long, and the hour hand is 5 centimeters long. Now, I know this is not 3 o'clock the way I'm drawing this, but that's the first mistake you could make when you're doing related rates questions, is just jump right to the end when you're looking at a specific moment in time. You want to consider this clock as it's moving here, as like almost like a movie that's going on. You're just watching this clock spin. So the distance between the tips of the hands we could call x, and the angle between the hands we could call theta. Now, it's very tempting to use the Pythagorean theorem here, but that's the first trap you could run into. And the students that fall in this trap are just imagining 3 o'clock here. They're saying, okay, at 3 o'clock, there's a 90 degree angle between the hour hand and the minute hand. But once again, we need to consider this as it's moving through time. And chances are the angle between the hour and minute hand is not going to be 90 degrees. So the best formula we could use to connect these terms is the law of cosines. We would have 8 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 8 times 5 times cosine of theta is equal to x squared. This is the better formula to use because once again, chances are we're not going to have a right triangle when we're looking at a clock. So now we just have to simplify this. We have 8 squared is 64 plus we have 5 squared is 25 and that simplifies to 89. So we're going to have 89 minus and then this simplifies here. We have 2 times 5 is 10 times 8 is 80 and then we have cosine theta is equal to x squared. So we get here, this is our general equation here, and we're gonna take a derivative of this equation with respect to time. So this starts off here not too bad. So now we take the derivative of 89 is zero, but now the derivative with respect to time of cosine theta is negative sine theta d theta over dt. So the minus is gonna change this to a plus. So we're gonna have 80 sine theta d theta over dt. And now we have to take the derivative of the right side. The derivative of x squared is 2x, but we have to tack on dx dt. Now, ultimately, we're solving for how fast the distance between the tips of the hands is changing. So that's telling us here to focus on this piece over here. So what we could do next, algebraically, we could divide both sides by 2x. And then that's going to give us the equation for dx over dt. So here we have 80 divided by 2 is 40. And now we could write out dx over dt is equal to and we're going to have 40 sine theta. So we have 40 sine theta, and then we have d theta over dt, and then we're dividing all of this by x. But now we get here, and it seems like we could just answer this question. We could say, okay, theta at 3 o'clock. So when we're looking over here at 3 o'clock, theta is equal to 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians. The distance between the hands, if this is 8 and this is 5, I'll leave the units out for the end. We could use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for x at this moment. So x at this moment, if we do the sum of the squares, we already did 8 squared plus 5 squared is 89. So x would be equal to the square root of 89 if we use the Pythagorean theorem at this exact moment in time. So that's our value of x. So what is d theta over dt? So this is where the question becomes evil. So to find this, we have to consider how fast is the minute and hour hand moving? So let's find that over in this section here. If we talk about the minute hand first, the minute hand, let's think about how fast does the minute hand go? The minute hand goes two pi radians every 60 minutes. It takes 60 minutes for the minute hand to go a full revolution around the clock like this. So that's two pi radians or 360 degrees in 60 minutes. So now we have to focus on the hour hand. So this one is a little bit trickier. So let's think about the hour hand. The hour hand is gonna go in 60 minutes it's gonna go 1 12th of the clock. Cause you think about here at three o'clock, let's say. So at three o'clock, an hour later, we're gonna be at four o'clock. And how many degrees or radians is between three and four o'clock? Well, it's two pi radians divided by 12. Because once again, there are 12 notches on a clock like this. Every time an hour goes by, we go 1 12th of the clock. So that's two pi over 12 radians in 60 minutes, okay? So that one's a little bit trickier to think about. But once we get this set up, now we could find d theta over dt. So to find d theta over dt, I want us to think about something simpler over here. So let's imagine here we have two cars on a highway and it's a straight run. And the car over here is going faster than the car in front of it. The car in front is going, let's say, 30 miles per hour. And the car behind is going 50 miles per hour. So if you wanted to find how fast is the distance between the cars changing, well, what you would do is you would do 30 miles per hour minus 50 miles per hour. And that would tell us that the distance is changing at negative 20 miles per hour, which essentially means that the distance between them is shrinking. 
20 miles every hour. So we're going to we're going to transfer that idea over here to find d theta over dt. What we do is we take the slower one, we take the hour hand that's in front. And this we could simplify here 2 over 12 simplifies to 1 over 6. And then if we have pi over 6 over 60, that's going to simplify to pi over 360. So that is the rate simplified here. We have pi over 360, and we're going to subtract the rate above it. But what I would like to happen here is to have common denominators. So I'm going to multiply this one above by 6 over 6, and that's going to turn into 12 pi over 360. So now we could simplify this nicely. And the units here are going to be radians per minute. So now we could simplify. We have d theta over dt is equal to pi minus 12 pi is negative 11 pi, and we're over 360 here, and the units are radians per minute. So now let's just think about this unit here. d theta over dt, it makes sense that it's negative because once again, the minute hand is chasing the hour hand. The angle between them is shrinking at this moment in time. So that's why it makes sense here that d theta over dt comes out negative. So now we're ready to solve this question here. We're considering what's going on here at 3 o'clock. So at 3 o'clock, now we could find out what's going on with dx over dt. So dx over dt at 3 o'clock is equal to, we have 40 times sine of theta is pi over 2, because at 3 o'clock, the angle between the hour and minute hand is 90 degrees, but in radians, that's pi over 2. And then we have d theta over dt, we just found, is negative 11 pi over 360. And now we're dividing all of this by x, and x we found at this moment in time to be square root of 89. And our solution at the end, how fast in centimeters per minute? So we just write out our units now. We have centimeters per minute. So now we could just plug this in. I'm going to press alpha y equals enter to pull up a blank fraction. And we have 40 sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. But just in case we don't know that, we'll just write it in here. We have sine pi over 2. And now we're multiplying here by negative 11 pi over 360. So we just tack this part on. And then we're dividing all of this by x, which at 3 o'clock was square root of 89. So we just write our square root of 89. We press enter. And here is our solution. So now we'll just write out our final answer here, and we'll round to three decimal places. dx over dt, we'll say, is negative 0 point, we have 407, and the units here are centimeters per minute. Question two, we have a light moving at 0 0.8 meters per second approaches a man standing four meters from the wall. And the light is one meter above the ground. And we want to know how fast is the tip P of the man's shadow moving when the light is seven meters from the wall. So for this question here, a lot of students struggle with this question because they try doing something like this. They extend this line all the way through and they extend this line and then they start thinking similar triangles. And you do want to be thinking similar triangles here. But if you go with this approach, you're going to quickly hit a dead end. And that makes this question very frustrating to start. So what you actually want to do here is you want to extend a horizontal line from this part of the light all the way across like this. So we're going to extend a horizontal line like this. And now what we have is we have right angles over here like this because we're going to assume that the ground and the wall are built well. And now we could start labeling this stuff. So I'm going to call this distance over here. We're going to call this distance y. And then next, we want to think about what's constant and what's changing. This distance over here, 4, is not changing at all because the man is standing still. But the distance between the man and this wagon over here, or the light source, we're going to call x. So now we have something we could work with. And since they told us that the light is 1 meter above the ground, we could find the distance from here to here, this distance over here that I'll highlight. This distance we could find by just doing 1.8 minus 1. So this would work out to 0 0.8. So that's going to be this vertical distance over here. We're going to call this vertical distance. 0 0.8 meters. So now I'm going to draw these triangles off to the side separately here. So the big triangle I'm going to draw over here, the big triangle involves this one going like this. And this one we could label is going to be y going this way. And it's going to be x plus 4 going along the bottom like this. But now for the small triangle, what we have is we're going to have that this distance, the vertical distance is fixed. That's 0 0.8. And the horizontal distance here is x. Now, I know that these two triangles are going to be similar because they have a right angle. And they're also sharing this angle over here. If I put a theta over here like this, then both of these triangles have an angle theta. So these two triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. But I don't actually need to label that there or establish and say it out loud that these triangles are similar. I'm just using that concept from geometry. So now, since we have similar triangles here, we could set up a proportion comparing their corresponding sides. So I could say over here that y over x plus 4 is equal to, we're going to have 0 0.8 over x. But now let's think about what we're trying to find here. We're trying to find how fast is the tip of the man's shadow moving when the light is 7 meters from the wall. So when I think about this here, 
what we're essentially finding is how fast is the shadow moving? That's dy over dt. So what that tells me, if this is what we're looking for, I want to isolate the variable y over here like this. So then all I have to do to isolate y is multiply both sides by x plus 4. So I'm going to multiply the left and the right by x plus 4, and this is going to get y by itself. So now after this cancels out, what we're going to have is we're going to have y is equal to, and we're going to have 0.8. And I'm going to write this a little bit different. I'm going to write this as 0.8 times, and we have the fraction x plus 4 over x. Now, in a moment, we're going to do a derivative. But before we do, I'm going to do a little algebra first, because otherwise, I would have to do the quotient rule. And I really don't want to do the quotient rule here. So what I'm imagining here is I'm going to break that up into x over x plus 4 over x. So that's going to simplify a little bit nicer now. We're going to have 0.8 times x divided by x is 1. And then we have plus 4 over x. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to write this off to the side over here. I'm going to rewrite this. We have y equals 0.8. And now we're multiplying by, in parentheses here, we have 1 plus, And I'm going to call this 4x to the negative 1 because now we're ready to use the power rule. So now we take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. And what we're going to have is we're going to have dy over dt is equal to, we have 0.8. We can leave the constant alone. And now we take the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 1 is 0, and we have plus. And now we have the derivative of 4x to the negative 1 with respect to time is going to give us, we're going to have negative 4x to the negative 2. And then we tack on our dx over dt like this. Now, before we close this out, some other stuff to consider here is that as the light is moving towards the man, x is shrinking. So dx dt has to be negative, okay? So dx dt is negative. So this we have to interpret here, the 0.8 meters per second is telling us essentially that dx over dt is negative 0.8 meters per second because once again the light source is moving towards the man so the distance between the man and the light source is shrinking so now to find dy dt at this moment in time dy dt once we plug in here is equal to we have 0.8 times and now let's think about what are the other givens here so at this moment in time when the light is seven meters from the wall what you want to think about if the total distance at this exact moment in time is seven so if this total distance here at this moment in time is seven this value here is 4. The missing value for x at this moment in time would be x equals 3. So we would have x is equal to 3 because, once again, let's just make that a little bit neater, x is equal to 3 because the light source is 7 meters from the wall. So that would be 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. So now we could plug that stuff in. We have negative 4. And just know here another thought is that negative 4 x to the negative 2, I could express this as negative 4 over x squared. Okay, so I'm going to use that over here at this part. So I have negative 4 over x equals 3. So I'll even say here when x is equal to 3 so that we're plugging in at a specific moment in time. So we have negative 4 over 3 squared, and now we're multiplying by dx dt, which is negative 0.8. So now we just plug all this stuff in. We have 0.8, and we're multiplying by, we have negative 4 divided by 3 squared. So negative 4 over 3 squared. And then we're going to multiply this by negative 0.8. So we have negative 0.8 like this. And now this is going to give us our final answer. So our units here were meters per second. So we're just going to write that over here. And now we can write our answer simplified. We have dy over dt at x equals 3 is equal to, and we're going to round to the nearest thousandths place. We're going to have 0 0.284 meters per second. And here is our solution to the second question.